evening. Uh, welcome to the Winthrop School Committee meeting Monday, June 5th, 2017 at 6 p.m. in the Neil Shapiro Center for Performing Arts at Winthrop High School. Um, Ms. Haynes, would you please call the roll? Mr. Vecchia? Present. Mr. Capabianco? Present. Dr. Callis? Present. Mr. Sanford? Here. Mr. Perrin? Here. Ms. Sullivan? Here. Uh, can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States, 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 States of America. America. To the Republic, Republic for which, which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you. Um, tonight, first on the agenda, we have delegates and visitors. We have um, the Middle School Drama Society. Mr. Macero. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, just a point of information, don't we usually have public comment first? We usually have public comment after delegates and visitors. I don't, I, don't, I don't know why I don't see it on the agenda, but I will do it. We will have delegates and visitors, and if it's all right with the committee, we'll do public comment, and then we'll do correspondence. Is there any objection to that? Thank you. If I may, Mr. Chairman, if you could ask the school committee members to come up front. Uh, tonight, I have four very special awards. Richard is well known in the winner of this to drive the car in the beginning of May, received a gold medal uh, in their middle school production of Dear Me. We are not going to honor that tonight because there are eighth graders going to the high school auditions. They, you know, sorry, in the theater world, they're not going to miss to get an award to go and audition again. So that's, they're excited. And we felt that we would move some of that to the June 19th. However, the eighth graders that night have their uh, moving on dance. So what we will do is we will present the certificates for the eighth graders at their moving on ceremony. But we'll, we'll take care of the sixth and seventh graders on June 19th. But tonight is even more special because this past year, uh, the METG, which is the Massachusetts Educational Theater Guild, which you're very familiar with that name because of our high school drama department, who went and uh, received the state championship at the high school level. What happens at the middle school level is the students, they come and they watch productions. And then at the end of the year, they create like an Academy Awards categories, best actress, best actor, best direction, best production, best sound, featured actors, featured actress. Well, this year we had four students from the uh, middle school production of Shrek the Musical Junior that have been nominated. And they will not find out if they were the chosen winner until uh, June 24th. However, they were nominated, which is a huge thing throughout the whole district of, I mean, the state of Massachusetts. Only five people are nominated for each award. So think about that when they've seen so many shows. So tonight I'd like to recognize those students. And I would like to ask them to come up uh, to get their certificate and to go and shake hands with the um, school committee. And then afterwards, if we could, I'd like to take a picture uh, of the three recipients. I don't believe we're going to see the fourth recipient here tonight because she's auditioning. Yes. Just uh, warn everybody about the job. Yes, yes, there's some um, plugs here. So. Um, therefore, so tonight's certificate of achievement is to certify that Will Gillis, Will Gillis received a nomination. <laughs> Will Gillis received a nomination for sound from the Massachusetts Educational Theater Guild for his participation in Shrek the Musical Junior. And if you recall watching the show, you will know that there were constant little great little sounds he had to put in and timing and everything. And what grade are you in, Will? Uh, seventh grade. And I'm telling you, it's great to have this ability to be able to do those things. So congratulations, Will. <coughs> is in grade six. And this is Jenny Delahanty. Jenny, would you come stand over to my left? <laughs> and she's going to know is that Jenny Delahanty received the nomination for Featured Actress 
uh, from the Massachusetts Educational Theater Guild uh, for her role in Shrek the Musical Junior, and I believe that was the featured actress of Little Fiona, Young Fiona. That's right, sixth grade, first time up here on the big stage, and she's received a featured actress uh, nomination. So congratulations, Jenny, very proud of you. Here you go, and you can go right over to the screen. And this young man, Michael, would you come up and stand here, Michael Callahan? Michael Callanan received a nomination for a featured actor for the Massachusetts Educational Theater for his role in Shrek the Musical Junior. And his role, one of his roles, I think he played multiple roles in it, but one of them primarily was Pinocchio. And if you remember the show when you saw it, I'm telling you, I, all I talked about was Pinocchio for the next couple of days. So Michael, outstanding job, congratulations. Thank you. you. Right over to the And finally, this young actress is probably upstairs right now auditioning. Um, she's not shy to the stage, and this is her second METG nomination. She was nominated last year uh, and for the Dr. Seuss Susical production, and this year, this certifies that Heather Buccini received a nomination for lead actress. So. Um, from the Massachusetts Educational Theatre Guild for her role in Shrek the Musical Junior. Heather played Fiona, for those of you who know uh, Shrek, and we're extremely proud of Heather, and uh, we wish her congratulations. <laughs> so at this time, could I have the three recipients that are here to come up in front of the school committee, and let's take a picture. We could have probably used Will tonight for us. <laughs> Delegates and visitors, we have Sandra Hurley with the Medical Careers Program. I don't see, I don't see anybody so, here from that. I um, can explain to you what we're doing, just if you want me to, I can do it. I can update you um, in the superintendent's report. Let's do it under superintendent's report, sure. if that's right. Okay. Um, and then the Wellness Committee, um, which um, I'm the only representative from the Wellness Committee here tonight, and we did complete. Um, the wellness policy that we'll talk about later under unfinished business. So, okay. um, thank you to all the people that helped to work on on that the last couple months. Um, so next we have public comment. Do you see any public comment? Okay. Seeing no public comment. Um, next we have correspondence. We have an email from Jimmy Santos. From the office of Congresswoman Catherine M. Clark, dated 524-17. Um, it was forwarded by Mr. Capbianco. Um, just wanted to flag some activity in the House today. Uh, appropriations, Labor, HHS subcommittee hearing. Congressman Clark, press secretary of education, DeVos. To clarify the administration's stance on LGP discrimination in federally funded schools. As you'll see, Clark asked DeVos if the administration would step in if federally funded schools discriminated against LGBT students. DeVos refused to answer. Um, this goes on to say that um, 
As you know, the Congressman serves as House Appropriator, who has also previously served on the Education Committee. She's committed to ensuring that all students are able to access an excellent education and thrive in their schools. Last year, she introduced a bill that would, all, would out colleges that discriminate against LGBT students. Um, there's also a, a link from a Washington Post report um, that I won't read. It's a, it must be an article. Um, please don't he hesitate to be in touch if you have any questions. Um, signed, Jimmy Santos, Constituent Services Representative from Congresswoman Clark's office. So, excuse me. Um, next, we have an email from Gus Martucci, dated May 24th, 2017. I was just made aware of social media posts by the chair of the school committee that has severely degraded four committee members, citizens, and most of all, my friends. This post by the chairperson personally attacked these four individuals because of a vote that was taken for the superintendent position. I have seen and been targeted by personal attacks by citizens and not that it makes it right but they were citizens. I have never seen this type of behavior by an elected official, especially from the chair of a school committee, because the school has a cyberbullying policy that needs to be adhered to. The members of the school committee should lead by example when it comes to this very important policy because of this awful and belittling post. I have serious concerns about the chairperson and her ability to move forward in an unbiased manner with these four members of the school committee members and the new superintendent. The school committee should vote remove her as a chairperson and a result of this scathing and bullying post, she should resign in order for the committee and the town to move forward. Thank you, Gus Martucci. Um, the next email we received was from um, Ms. Cheryl Howard on 5:30:17. Dear members of the school committee, last week's events in our town were disheartening. Don Sullivan's posting on Facebook was especially troubling because it showed her disdain for members of the school committee. Her words were unprofessional, unnecessary, and unproductive. The, this behavior is not acceptable. When I give my vote, I essentially allow, excuse me, I am essentially allowing them to speak for me. I feel Don abused her position. This behavior is narcissistic in nature. All town officials that have been elected should show consideration, reserve, and respect. Don has failed as a leader. I, for one, do not want her to speak for me any longer. Please ask for her resignation immediately, Cheryl Howard, Precinct 2. Um, there's an another email from Mr. Anthony Frasillo. Um, this has to do with the naming of Miller Field. Excuse me. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank you for your service to the town. So he's, he has an email about um, the possibility of renaming Miller Field, and he's concerned um, <coughs> I believe that, that a soldier's name should not be taken off the field. Uh, if any other name were proposed, it should be Miller Field at blank stadium. Um, uh, so uh, th this is basically the nature of the email. And so myself and Mr. Vecchia did respond to him saying that there has been no, just to you know curtail any rumors, there has been no discussion at this committee, also at the Miller Field Committee, there's been no discussion to rename the fields. Um, and there is a process for naming <coughs> school buildings, areas in school buildings, and any field that's in the jurisdiction of the school, um, where a, a name would have to be nominated, and we do have a whole policy and procedure. Um, and last, I knew there was a moratorium on that as well. So um, I don't there's nothing really to report at this time, and I, and I think that Mr. Frasillo's um, concerns were alleviated um, from our responses. Um, next, we did receive an email today that is not on the agenda, um, but it is in our packet. I think Ms. Hames did uh, deliver it to the school committee members today. This came in today, June 5th. Um, via email, dear school committee members, I had the honor to be invited to the 2017 class graduation on Friday night. It was the first time I was in the school and I was very impressed. <coughs> I truly felt a sense of pride in our community and a commitment as to why Winthrop is worth it. On a serious note, I am still in shock over Ms. Sullivan's display of inappropriate behavior while acting in her role as an elected member of the school committee. And in fact that, and given the fact that it has had or may have a substantial negative impact on the students and staff of the Winthrop Public Schools, I asked to seek uh, her removal from the Winthrop School Committee. 
it is without a doubt the, the role of a school committee member is one that is held in high esteem and the student by the students and the staff of the Winthrop Public Schools. Students and staff are held to high standards to ensure that they receive equal opportunity in a safe and supportive environment to allow this public display of inappropriate behavior to go unpunished will undoubtedly discredit the school department's power to uphold policies and procedures that have been approved by the school committee. Sincerely, Kathy Curran, Precinct 2. Okay. Um, next on our agenda, we have the minutes of May 22nd. The minutes were in our packet for um, approval. Everyone had a chance to look at them. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Mr. Becky. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Capriano. All in favor say aye. 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 Abstentions? Abstentions, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Up next, we have the warrant. We first have warrant SVW17-21 in the amount of $86,809.60. We have two payroll warrants dated May 3rd. Is this, that's not a typo, is it? Is the same amount? Is that correct? The same, the same date and the same amount? No. Is it just one? It was two, one was a boy. Okay. We have payroll warrant dated May 3rd, 2017 in the amount of $642,419.10. Um, motion to take them both together. Is there a second? Second. Second from it. Dr. Callis, all in favor say aye. 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 Oppose? Abstentions? We have some budget transfers as well that were in our packet for review. Um, is there a motion to approve? Motion. Motion by Dr. Callis. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dr. Uh, Mr. Vecchia. Is there any discussion on the transfers? Madam Chair, yep. I, uh, what I can just tell you is that these are most of these are to cover any salary expenses that came on board at one point that we had to train, change over. If you look at the um, adjustment counselor, that salary is adjusted because of we didn't get the certain amount of students that were projected in the international program. So that salary is taken out of. Um, and then in the other areas, we had some other expenses that had to be covered, but so far that's what those coverages are there for. Any other discussion on the budget transfers? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Oops. Thank you. Lost my agenda. Sorry, I need to get the agent. There it is. All right. Buildings and grounds. We have a buildings and grounds request from Saugus Legion Baseball on the date of um, June 9th, June 21st, June 23rd, and July 12th for Veterans Field, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. It uh, has come with appropriate paperwork and um, and uh, fees. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Mr. Just Beth a quick question. Are we sure it's not going to interfere with any other sports, any of our own town sports? I ran the dates by um, the athletic director, oh, sure. so it's all set. So I think we had a motion by Mr. Vecchia. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Capbianco. Any other discussion on the motion? <coughs> all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? I'll vote aye. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Can't get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're safe with the baseball game. Um, next on the agenda, we have curriculum. Um, we don't have any. Do you want to talk about the medical careers program under curriculum? Sure. I'll just let you know that in regards to the medical careers, um, I've been in touch with Mike Badalaro. Uh, we put together a letter today upon his request. Uh, we're asking, uh, we've sent a request to Massport for um, a $75,000, I would say, you know, to sponsor it for this year moving forward. Um, and they will also would like a letter from the town manager with the same request, which he's going to do. Um, we're asking if they would fund us for this year uh, so that we can honor the 10 seniors that they haven't all said that they want to go out and do the campaigning outside, you know, the, the work study. But um, we want to at least 
have that opportunity to try to see if we can get someone to sponsor uh, the current program. And then I think at that point what we need to do as a district is reevaluate. If we can get it up and running, which I think would be great, um, I have talked to Ms. Howard on it. Um, I think it's important to, to reevaluate the program to make sure that we want to continue the program. There's no question about that we want to have the program in, but we need to make sure that we have the program that's cost effective for us moving forward. And so whether that's going to come from a grant or if we're going to take it and own it, then we want to look at ways that we can own it. The question is, is, is the person who comes in to teach that course, are they also DESE certified? And so that, those are the types of the angles that we're working on right now. So, but we, we are working very hard to continue that program at the school. Um, I, I actually had the pleasure of going in and speaking to this class a few weeks ago, and, um, and I was very impressed at the, the work that they have been doing in that class, even though I know that there were some stumbling blocks this year, um, and, and definitely some stumbling blocks for funding for next year. And my recommendation would be to have a, a Winthrop teacher employed by the Winthrop Public Schools to be teaching that program moving forward, and to have um, Mrs. Hurley and um, anyone else that the teacher might see fit be a, a consultant to that classroom, because that will allow a, an a, appropriate teacher evaluation <laughs> to take place. Um, you know, and I think that moving forward it will be um, you know, part of our budget. It should be a line item in our budget that we offer this to the students. I think it is important. Uh, medical careers is obviously a growing field, and it, it would be nice to get our students started in that direction before graduation. Well, one thing that was really um, obvious this year is how impactful that class was in the sense that we've had more candidates going to school of nursing than we've had in quite a few years so that right there told me a lot that that how successful that class was awesome thank you okay so any questions about that next on the agenda we have subcommittee reports um, we did have a buildings and grounds subcommittee mr Beckett, are you okay to report on that yep the meeting of the Building and Grounds was held on June 1st, 2017 at 4.30 at the Winthrop High School. In attendance was myself, Don Sullivan, Brian Perrin, and Superintendent Macero. Item uh, on the agenda included the new field maintenance position for Miller Field, update on the custodian supervision, and an RFP for transportation. The committee agreed to include partial funding for the maintenance position at Miller Field for the 2017-2018 budget. The committee reviewed a report by the public facilities manager pertaining to the day-to-day -day responsibility of the custodial staff, as well as the importance of the execution of the new school maintenance plan. The committee recommended that at least quarterly meetings with senior staff and building and grounds committee to ensure proper implementation of the school maintenance plan. The chair will set up a meeting with the facilities manager to review the committee's recommendations and concerns. The committee discussed the need for review of the transportation needs of the district as it pertains to cost and recommends that the school committee execute an RFP for transportation to see if there can be any savings to the district by outsourcing the transportation service. That's the report of the committee. Okay, thank you. Yes. Just to, to correct or maybe clarify, I think we had uh, discussed partially funding it depending on how the budget came back. Correct. Just to correct it. Mm -hmm. Any questions about that? Okay, thank you. Um, we also had a um, superintendent contract bargaining that was in executive session last week. That's ongoing. We had a um, curriculum. curriculum subcommittee this evening. <coughs> um, Dr. Callis, would you report on that? Um, yeah, we talked about uh, three main things and then also some other questions came up. Um, the first thing that we talked about was the math curriculum for the high school. Uh, the math department over there has done extensive work looking at um, seven different textbooks and how they might fit with our program and looking at the online tools that these curricula come with. Um, and they uh, are suggesting that we go with Envisions, which is a Pearson product, and it has um, many online tools, including an online notebook. Um, the online homework system provides immediate feedback, but it also differentiates, differentiates instruction automatically based off of student responses. There's interactive reading and notebook features and online graphing calculators um, and explorations to build understanding of ideas. 
Um, and it fits with the scope and sequence that the, the Algebra 2 teachers have been using already. Um, Mr. Beck reported that uh, the Pearson has, is eager to let us pilot it for one year, um, but I do want to have a conversation that if we do pilot it, I w wouldn't want our teachers to go through all the work of piloting a brand new curriculum if we as a committee weren't going to commit to funding it um, because it is a subscription-based service. Um, so we're going to need a, a line item for that. Um, the other thing that we talked about is opportunities to work with the Winthrop Historical Society and the Dean Winthrop House, and we talked, um, the principals were present, and we talked about different uh, opportunities for the students to visit both the Dean Winthrop House, but also other historical sites in Winthrop. Um, we also had a conversation, our ongoing conversation about integrating social issues into the curriculum at the lower grades. Um, at the Fort Banks, the adjustment counselor is doing work teaching students about respecting uh, differences. Um, but Ms. Pearson uh, talked with us about considering making it a more explicit learning goal for the coming year, the history of the U.S. addressing um, our differences. Um, the fourth graders did a Where I Come From research presentation to each other. And um, next year, we're also, we've also been talking about perhaps the reading curriculum could be an opportunity to in integrate some of these ideas. Um, since the curriculum is so full as it is. Um, then some other things that we talked about uh, that we'll have to continue our conversations is um, standardizing communication with parents and keeping the contacts updated efficiently. Um, that might be a goal for the coming year. And uh, we talked about parental engagement with um, all communities. And we had a question about, in order to fund <coughs> Envisions, the math curriculum, we had a question about the iPads. And when our lease is up, are we returning the iPads? So the question them? I had for you, because I wasn't there, um, yeah. if you pilot the program, when are you looking to make that line item in effect? To pilot it for next year, or are you piloting? The piloting, it? we think, would be free. Free, so okay. So then, the following year, yes, you would have that line item, okay. um, because we've we have 147,000 that will be the final payment of the iPads, and what I've done on that, I've I've recommended. That's what I've done. I've recommended to Susan and Michael, the following year, um, that that become a curriculum line item for textbooks, slash. Chromebooks, there was certain amounts of money that I had put into different line items so that you can then establish those areas. Okay, and are we returning the iPads when the lease is up or are they ours? No, they should be ours. Okay. That's why right now we're utilizing those down at lower levels. Okay. Um, no votes were taken. Um, Chairperson Sullivan and I were present and the principals, who, uh, Mr. Cromie, Mr. Harrity, Ms. Pearson, and Mr. Curley, Mr. Beck from the High School Math Department, and Ms. Schiff from the Winthrop Historical Society. I'm sorry if you already mentioned this, but they, um, Mr. Harrity and um, Ms. Pearson were saying that they received a grant for the summer. Oh, yes. that's right. That? Yeah, they, um, they received a $30,000 grant for professional development um, for K-8 teachers and uh, unpacking, they call it standards boot camp, unpacking the standards in science, um, English language arts, and mathematics. Yeah, so they're going to have about five that. professional development days that they can use that money for. Three teachers from each grade. Who was the grant from? The State Department of Ed. Yeah. And there were, I think, over 100 schools applied and only 30 yeah. were granted it. A lot of credit goes to Mr. Harry on that. He went out and he put that through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Any questions about that? Um, we did have a wellness uh, committee meeting last um, a week ago Tuesday on the 22nd uh, where we did complete the um, mandatory wellness policy um, that I'll, I'll be uh, reporting on an unfinished business and that was it for subcommittees superintendent's report yes thank you first I'd like to start off by saying what a graduation I mm -hmm. thoroughly enjoyed the ceremony I was very pleased uh, with the high school staff uh, administration for putting together a wonderful event I've heard nothing but rave reviews um, from the gymnasium uh, people were sitting in here about 50 to 60 people uh, watching it on live on the big screen in here and it just seemed to flow very well and I, I give a lot of credit to Matthew Crombie uh, Michael Capasso Kathleen D'Amico Mariana Babine Chris Dean Suma uh, who did a lot of the initial work to make sure that we um, 
we did have some, um, you know, we had it ran, run smooth. And so the student speeches were outstanding. Um, congratulations, of course, to Mr. Holden. I mean, it's not every day that you have one child be the valedictorian, but in this particular case, he had not only the valedictorian, but the salutatorian. And I did receive an email from Mr. Uh, text from Mr. Holden earlier that the train broke down on the top of the Sierra Mountains, so he would be unavailable to attend tonight. So apparently he's far away, but uh, deservingly so. But, um, and one of the highlights, of course, Elizabeth Carsley and Emily Nichols in their song that they sung for good from Wicked. Uh, it was just, it was a very emotional evening uh, for many people. Um, even one who's sitting in the center typing right now, her daughter uh, graduated. So we were very happy and pleased for her. So I um, just wanted to go through that. As far as the end of the year for the remaining K through 11 students, the end of the year is quickly coming upon us. Two weeks from tomorrow will be the last day of school for Winthrop High School, Winthrop Middle School, and for the Arthur T. Cummings. Two weeks from Wednesday will be the last day of school for the William P. Gorman School. The last day of school for students is a half day. Uh, on the 20th, for those three schools, it is a full day for teachers. Um, the last day of school on the 21st will be a half day for students um, at the William P. Gorman. The reason the William P. Gorman is going one more day than the rest of the system is because they were out due to that water damage uh, one additional day. And so we must, by law, do 180 days of school for grades one and two, primarily. Kindergarten, we're not as required, but we're, since the school's in session, we'll keep the kids there. Um, so um, that will be happening, and you know, lots of end of year activities are coming up. I'm sure you've been notified for quite a few uh, things. As you know, tomorrow, the grade eight will now take its annual trip, which is in its sixth year running to Washington, DC. The students will leave at 5.45 a.m. tomorrow morning, right from the middle school and they should arrive in Baltimore by around 4 o'clock where I will meet up with them in Baltimore tomorrow and then spend the rest of the week with them uh, in Washington DC on Wednesday and Thursday and then on Friday I will um, come home. I'm going down by plane because Mr. Curley is coming this year as the administrator that will be there on bus to and from but I wanted to go down with them again because this is the largest class we've brought down to Washington DC. We have over 120 students attending. Uh, they're very excited and so that will be happening. I'm sure if you go on Winter Public Schools Facebook page you will see a lot of pictures of Washington DC over the next um, three to four days and hopefully the weather will turn out so that we're not sitting under umbrellas a lot at the Baltimore Orioles game tomorrow night. We'll be rooting for the Pirates I think but we'll be there. Um, so on the night, as you all know, tomorrow night is the town council meeting. The town council is going to appropriate their budget for the town. On the, no, on the November, we're long past that. On the June 19th meeting, I will have an appropriated budget, line itemed budget for you to approve. Uh, we will need to approve the budget moving forward so that the July budget can then start to um, do payroll. The, I would probably recommend after tomorrow night a subcommittee for the budget subcommittee before the next meeting on the 19th so that way we can just kind of go over what uh, the final appropriation is um, and make sure that we've, um, if there is money, if there's money more than was requested, you know, that originally was appropriated, then we can take a look at those. Um, so we are working with um, the town manager and stuff, but I will leave all of that to tomorrow night um, for them to, you know, do the appropriations as they see it. We've put in our uh, passion of what we need. Um, I do thank uh, the people of, in the community of Winthrop for addressing those issues of, of also requesting. I've received letters, you've received letters, but also all those letters that I've received, the town council has received as well. Um, so we are working towards that. So I will have a budget for you on the 19th that hopefully we will be able to approve. But I will recommend to you that when that budget, I will get that budget out to you maybe even before you get the packet so that you can really take a look at it on that. Um, the, we talked about medical careers. In your budget, 
I mean, in your packet tonight, you saw that, um, according to my contract, uh, there is an early leave payback. And in the early leave payback, um, as I gave you, like, you should have had this document in your packet. Um, there is, if I were to leave before my contract end, and my contract currently does not end for another two years, uh, we both next year would have had the decision of whether or not to renew it the following year. Um, but there is a, an agreement that if I were to go or you were to say goodbye to me, that there was a $5,000 um, payment either way. So I've, I've listed that in on what that is. Um, and I'm giving you the example of how I would pay that 5000 back. Um, I have a total of vacation times, days that I would like to cash in as part of towards that $5,000. Um, there are eight and 8.5 days I would like to turn in for vacation, which would then inform me that I need to pay you uh, $18, which I will gladly take care of that with a check for you. Um, I had Mr. Uh, Hodnett review this, and so this is the agreement, and I just wanted to make sure I brought that forward to you so that we could make sure that that's all set. Um, so thank you, Mr. Superintendent. I'd like to make a motion that we accept um, this uh, letter and this, um, you know, his obligation to pay back that $5,000 um, be taken from his vacation days, um, as the letter stated. Is there a second? Any discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? <clears throat> All right, so I'll have you sign this one yep. when you get a chance to send that over later. Um, that check up before you get that signed. <laughs> well, I'm not going to write the check till she signs her. So. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, and Cash we did the budget. Yeah. Uh, end of year. Cash All right. Um, so there's the, as far as the, oh, one, one exciting thing that did happen, I don't know if you caught that in the good news report that I had sent out, it said hot off the press. Friday, because Friday was a busy day with all events going on, with, especially towards graduation. But the middle school band that we recognized at their concert two weeks ago um, with silver medals certificate did the Great East Festival and walked away with the gold. Wow. So we were very, very happy to see that. That was cut off the press on Friday. So, you know, state champions, gold medals, feeling good about our arts. So there we go on that. Um, as far as uh, moving on ceremony for the Arthur T. Cummings will be held in this building on uh, June 16th, that Friday. I believe you'll get it. I think you've all gotten an invitation for it. And then on June 20th, the last day of school. So we'll have our meeting June 19th. After our meeting on June 19th, we may want to go over and see the kids um, in their uh, moving on dance that they will have in the cafeteria. So we will not be here on the the 19th because they'll be utilizing this space and then um, the 20th is the moving on ceremony for the middle school students eighth grade um, and hopefully uh, you'll be able to attend that's all I have under the superintendent's report I can go into personnel if you'd like yes please okay so under uh, postings we had uh, mentoring positions for the 2017-18 school year we also had a speech language uh, pathologist long-term substitute from mid-September to mid-February. Um, and we have a high school, anticipated high school chemistry teacher. Uh, we anticipate, we've been informed that the high school chemistry teacher is resigning to go teach at the vocational, but we still need the letter. So that's why we've done the anticipation. Um, we did have a request for a maternity leave that you'll see in your packet. And then last but not least, this just came in today. Dear Mr. Macero, please consider this letter of my notification of my intention to retire from Winthrop Public Schools on Thursday, July 27, 2017. It has been an honor and a privilege to serve you, the staff and students of Winthrop. Thank you again for the opportunity to be a part of a wonderful school system. Additionally, I'm requesting to buy back my unused sick days in accordance to my contract. Frank Woods, K-12 through <laughs> Curriculum Director. Um, if I may just for a second, I've known Frank all my life. We grew up two streets over, I mean one street over. Uh, Frank may be leaving us after three years retiring, but Frank served in Saugus for I believe 31 years. 31, Frank? 
Yep. 31 years as a science teacher, um, as a, uh, he went from science, he was a curriculum director there, as well as multiple vice principal of eighth grade. Frank, um, his biggest role for his tenure was as an eighth grade science teacher who did multiple trips with his eighth grade students and stuff. Um, you know, I wish Frank the best. Frank is an excellent teacher, and Frank has been a great asset to us here at Winthrop, uh, really putting us on track with multiple things that we needed to get on track with, not just in the curriculum area, but in areas, because we're such a small community, we take multiple departments and we all work together. And the work that Frank did with the whole civil rights was outstanding, that got us on task for all of the civil rights programs. Um, the work that Frank has helped with the principals in regards to the languages and the policies and helping in those areas. Those are jobs that, you know, without having that person to be able to help you, become more onto the principals and onto the superintendent. So it was very, very appreciative of the work that he's done there. As well as, we haven't gotten to the points where we want to yet of getting the curriculum needs that we have in, but Frank has opened our eyes to what those needs are now, and we need to move forward to make sure that those areas come in. And so, I, you know, Frank's in the audience. I want to thank Frank for all the work he's done for us. Uh, and that is all I have, but I, I think we'll, the administrative contract will probably need a vote on that sixth. With this buyback, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'd also like to say, uh, Frank, thank you for your service, and I actually think it will be helpful that you'll be here through mid-July um, for any transition. Um, you certainly know a lot about um, what's going on in the district right now, and I think that you certainly will be an asset, so I appreciate you kind of sticking it out for a couple weeks for us. Um, there is a... Uh, uh, Mr. Woods is asking to buy back his unused sick days in accordance with his contract. Is there a motion to do so? So moved. By Mr. Beck, is there a second? <coughs> second. Second by Mr. Capbianco. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Thank you. I'm all set. All set. All right. um, I see Mr. Hodnett in the. There's not. There's no news for us today, right, Mr. I, I see you in the audience. I didn't see you before. There was no news um, for us today. The next on the agenda is the interim superintendent contract. Yes. No. Okay. Thank you. We we have the uh, meeting scheduled for tomorrow. We have the meeting scheduled for tomorrow at three o'clock, which will be an executive session. Right. Thank you. Madam Chair, if I may just, in my research on this process, uh, I would like to see the whole school committee take over that process and not just the subcommittee. This has been done in, in the many towns, and that's just something I'd like to bring up for discussion here. So currently we have a subcommittee um, tomorrow. We have a, another subcommittee on Wednesday and then another special school committee meeting direct following that. Um, I, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know what people's thoughts are. Is, is that a motion or? A yeah, I'd like to make a motion that the entire school committee is involved in this subcommittee, instead of the subcommittee. Okay, so for purpose of discussion, is there a second? Second by Ms. Vecchia. Discussion on the motion? I just don't want to see it slow down. The process, if we're going to bring the whole committee into the negotiation portion of this, it could really slow it down and affect our ability to get it uh, moved forward. So I, I'll leave that to you, Paul. Do you think it's a, a good idea at this point in the process to do that? Well, what I would say is that um, there is a uh, time constraint involved. It's my understanding that the uh, selected candidate is leaving uh, on Thursday for a vacation. We were trying to target Wednesday as the day in which to conclude negotiations so that the committee would have a full contract before you uh, so that the committee could vote on it and Ms. Howard uh, could sign the contract if, if it was concluded at that point in time. And although it is permissible under the law, 
off of the full committee to actually negotiate the contract. In order to do that, you'd have to post the meeting for executive session and go into negotiations. And um, it would, it, well, in theory, it would be, it would theoretically be possible within 48 hours if you wanted to schedule a meeting and post it for Wednesday evening. Well, which we have do have. Full committee negotiations at that point in time. It in fact could logistically be done, but short of that, if you go beyond Wednesday night, it's my understanding Miss Howard is going to be on vacation out of the town for at least a week, so you'd be postponing negotiations until some point after that. In the interest of time, I'd like to withdraw my nomination. Um, so, do you withdraw your second? Yes. And then to motion withdraw. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, so we have some citations for retirement. Um, I don't, do you know how many there are offhand? Um, Quite a few of, of our retirees. I'll um, just read the first one. That they're all the same except for the name. Um, we have a resolution whereas the retiree has completed 11, 11 or however many years of service to the students of Winthrop. Um, the, nom the retiree has been devoted and loyal friend and colleague, whereas the nominee has had a strong positive impact on s scores of Winthrop students through her display of genuine concern of young people. Therefore, be it resolved that the school committee of the town of Winthrop expresses its sincerest gratitude, congratulations, and best wishes, and that it is voted and made part of the official minutes of the Winthrop School Committee. Um, so we have several citations here from people that are retiring this year. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve um, the citations. Is there a second? Second by Ch uh, Vice Chair Perrin. All in favor, any discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions, thank you. Madam Chair. Yes. On June 15th at the Cottage Park Yacht Club, we will be having a um, end of the year gathering in honor of the retirees. Um, so that will happen um, at 4 o'clock if you're okay. anybody's more than welcome to. 4 o'clock. Okay. Back. Thank you. All right. We've already done the early buyback. Um, we have a re request, the Winter Viking Youth Basketball Camp. Is this an overnight camp? Is that why we're having it for approval or out of? I don't know. I haven't, no, I haven't Winter Vikings Youth Basketball Camp approval. It's not a buildings and grounds issue, right? No. Um, Winthrop Viking Summer Basketball Camp will be run by the Winthrop High School, I'm sorry, Winthrop High Boys basketball coach, staff, and players. The summer camp will include um, drills and so on. Grades 1 through 8, July 10th through 13th, 10 a.m. to 2.30. Um, registration deadline is June 30th. Um, we, do we, is this something we have to approve? Is this a buildings and grounds request? It's not a it's buildings and grounds. Mr. Serino asked me to um, just put it in the packet for school committee okay. approval. So it, it's um, it's not a buildings and grounds request because it's part of the uh, Winthrop High School uh, coaching staff, and it's not an overnight. Um, we we vote to approve overnight. Right, but I believe it's a fundraiser because I believe these students, if they choose to go into this, correct? I, I haven't seen the. I'm trying to find the memo myself. But if they participate in this, is there a cost to yeah. it? Yeah, hundred dollars. Right. So that cost goes towards their uh, booster, time. their booster club, oh. and so therefore, okay. I think that's why Mr. Serena wanted your approval oh, okay. on I it see. because it involves money. Okay, that wasn't clear to me. Right. So, okay. Wait. So it's a. It goes. It, it would go to the Winthrop High School basketball boosters. Which is one of the revolving accounts, right? It's not correct. Separate from correct. It's our, in the. So okay. it, right now, it's it's a revolving account that goes through okay. the, the um, business office. Okay. Okay, so motion to approve the so Winter moved. Viking Youth Basketball. Mr. Capianco? I said so moved. Okay. Do you want a second and then discuss? Second. Discussion. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so discussion on the motion. Are we sanctioning this? Are we overseeing this? I mean, we had this question with the cheerleading camp and other issues. I just don't want outside entities to come in and not know what's going on and still have the responsibility right so the coach the, the coach is running the camp and his students are helping running the camp it's very similar to what the baseball program does 
when Mr. DeMarco during February vacation has, he does a, he runs a camp and his kids come in and help and the money that comes in goes towards their. Uh, is, is there gonna be a, uh, a rental of the space? No, because it's the, the high school program. It's the high school the high students. School so they, and they're gonna do it during the school day. Okay. So the custodians don't need to be hired after. If they were going to do it after school was out, you know I mean, in the summertime, when at three o'clock when custodians leave, they would have to then pay for the custodian. And just to be yep. clear, there's no, no folks coming in from outside the town. This is no, this is just for the school. This is just for the kids in town right, correct. to go to the program, correct? Well, it says it's boys and girls grade one through eight. Um, it's a three days. I'm not so sure that it says Winthrop um, only, but. But I think we can that, make that sure that that's, I that's think that's intention. our intention is that okay. it's Winthrop only. Gotcha. I know that there's always been a, a desire to do, um, we used to, years ago, they used to have a Winthrop Youth, you know, our kids would work with the Winthrop Youth, and then that program didn't happen for a while, and they want to bring that program, establish it back, just like they do in baseball and in the other programs, so. Is there any other discussion? I mean, we question? can make sure, if you want to, that it's only Winthrop students. Dr. Callis? Um, so one of the, uh, I'm wondering if there are any costs that we're not thinking of that might be involved with this that the. When they do the baseball, there's no cost at all. Okay. There's no cost from our end. We no don't charge them for any, if, because they're not doing it after a certain time the building's open. But what about the staff? Like, isn't the person who's running it going to be paid on these three days or is he just volunteering his time on those three days? That I would have to ask Mr. Sorino how that all. I mean, we, like when Mr. DeMarco runs his, we he doesn't take a salary. It's okay. a pure fundraiser for okay. the program. So the money comes into the club account, and okay. that's what they use for their banquet and if they need shirts and stuff like that. Okay, I think I was just confused because it wasn't written up as a fundraiser, but I understand that. Yep. Your time. No, I think I'm good. I'm good. Do I have a question, Mr. Rector? Do you have a question? We have time if you wanted to table it Here to the next right meeting and then um, have the superintendent. I'm just concerned answer. about, you know, um, it says here in the, in the form it, it actually has a release in terms of injuries. Are we going to help be held responsible as far as the school committee and the school department mm -hmm. if there's an injury on, on the field? I don't know the answer to that. Um, we, we have the, I mean, because it's a school event, we have a waiver, I mean, a rider on this, uh, just like we do with the uh, baseball, the cheerleading, all of that, so. Is the trainer available in the summertime? The trainer is, but that would probably be an expense. So that's the only thing on it. I mean, it is July 10th to 13th. If you want, we can have them come back in and talk about it on the next meeting. Do people want more information before we vote on this? So it's just making me wonder if, and originally I had been for just letting the principals um, decide on fundraisers, and I actually thought we had made that change in policy. We did. Um, we did, but it's in the summer. I think because it's it's outside the regular year. outside the regular school year it's something that they want to do and I think you know it's better to be safe than sorry if you tell me it's got to go it can go back to us to make the decision we'll be happy to do that but um, well one thing I would just I, I, I would like something that was more ha like if we're going to approve something we should have all the details including like what kind of staff are we paying you know are we the things like are we being open and is there a bigger cleanup job than we would expect like that's the kind of thing information that I would expect if we were going to approve and, it and what's the program itself you know, I mean, is it? Oh, what's going to happen? You mean day to day? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's three a, days, but right, it's a youth basketball camp. Yeah. So, um, it sort of yeah, explains it here. <laughs> right. So, um, but that's fine. We can. I can have Mr. Serino ask the coach to come to the next meeting and answer some questions on okay. it. Would Would a delay in vote hinder uh, registration? That's my only question. Oh, because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Registration yeah. deadline it, is it's June a basic, 30th. It's a basic youth sports clinic which we've had for a number of years just a different sport yeah so i don't really i don't recall voting on it before so I feel well we like voted on the baseball one baseball you voted on simple. this one we haven't had in a while yeah yeah, but, yeah. okay but, i mean i i don't rec I, I would recommend that it be approved i don't see any issue with it 
But I will further to Mr. Serino say that we need to have those items brought in. Do you, do you think we need to? I mean, what's the difference between this and any other sports program that we do where we have our coach there and his students? I, I, I feel comfortable voting on it. Okay. Yeah, I do as well. Okay. Right. right. I agree. Okay. So uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Thank you. Unanimously passes. Um, approval of student handbooks under unfinished business. Um, we do have some changes to the handbook um, that were in our packet for review. Um, Motion to approve. Second. Perfect. Does anybody want me to read them or is everybody good with them? Any discussion on the motion? I would just like to thank the principals for, um, I know they have a lot going on and uh, their attention to detail and thought. Appreciate it. Anything else? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. <coughs> You're going to abstain? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> wellness policy <coughs> so we're down to unfinished business the wellness policy so the wellness policy is in response to a new mandate that has to be um, we have to have a wellness policy completed by June 30th of this year it's a new um, government mandate and the what's mandated is that we have a policy that discusses nutrition and physical activity um, the other um, prevention of substance use policy that we saw recently, uh, while it may um, seem to overlap with the wellness committee and the wellness policy, is a separate policy. And so this policy that we have in our packet is um, to fulfill this responsibility that we need to have done by June 30th, 2017. Um, I'd like to thank the wellness committee for um, getting this together in a very timely manner. Um, we, some of parts of this policy um, that I want to highlight are that um, we're going to be following Aramark's policy, which is, um, meets the guidelines where um, we have uh, food, food that's allowed at, at school for parties or bake sales or um, any incentives or, you know, the MCAS breakfast, things like that. They have to adhere to the smart snacks in school guidelines. Um, and so that you see that throughout the policy. The other thing um, that we talked about is um, having physical activities that are special events like the dodgeball tournament or the March Madness tournament, things like that, that we have those highlighted and um, not only do we have them for every grade level, but we have them multiple times a year and those are advertised on our website um, and through handouts that get sent home and through a connected message. Um, and the other thing you'll notice is that we're going to have a wellness liaison at each school that's familiar with this policy and can act as someone to um, answer questions regarding the smart snacks and school nutrition. Um, so things like this, the um, snack has to be whole grain. There's a bunch of details about this. Um, so I would ask, if people have had a chance to review it, that we waive the um, need to go to the policy subcommittee in the interest of time, um, that we approve this policy. We have the first reading tonight and the second reading on June 19th, and we are able to approve the policy then so that we can have it in our policy book before June 30th. So we're mandated to follow the smart snacks and school nutrition standards. Right, and so each of these Roman numerals on the policy meets, um, is, is our um, version of the criteria that was given to us. The wellness committee would like to um, enhance this policy, but this meets the basic standards of what the requirements are for right now. And then in the next, next academic year, the wellness committee would like to uh, regroup and expand on anything that um, might make this policy more functional for the Winter School District. Second? Did you put a motion? I didn't, I didn't make a motion. I was motion that we waive sending this to the policy subcommittee. 
second. Any discussion on the motion to waive sending it to the policy subcommittee? Uh, no, but discussion on the policy itself. So let's vote on that and then we'll do the first reading. Um, so all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Um, so I'll make a motion that tonight we receive this as the first reading of this policy. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Catbianco. Discussion on the motion? Yes. I, I just, I'm looking at uh, any and all, the yeah, Roman numeral three, any and all food or beverages brought to school for classroom parties, bake sales, events, or given as incentives will be in compliance with snacks, snacks in school, nutrition. Is that a requirement? Yes. Even for our bake sales? Wow. It's just, it's so restrictive on what they can do for fundraisers mm -hmm. and for events. I, it's, it's just hard to vote for that, knowing that it's... Uh, yeah, that's not a Winthrop School District standard. That's a that's what's come down from the federal government that we have to follow. That's yeah. correct. If we don't um, adopt this, what's, what's the we? I'm sorry. We close this down or something. <laughs> <laughs> we would lose our funding. Well, actually. we've had. I mean, Susan can speak to this. Mm -hmm. They they do. We would lose us. our funding that right. we get from so the state. So which funds? What type of funding? It's like thirty thousand a month. It's a lot of money. <laughs> yes, and they will be having yeah. bake sales. I guess. Yeah. have a lot of bake sales to make that. I mean, I right. think. <laughs> so here's a clear example. Last year, uh, when we were being audited, they happened to come during Valentine's Day, and of course, during Valentine's Day, there was a special sale going on at one of the buildings, and we got written up on it. Now, I argued back, of course, on that. I mean, it's Valentine's Day. We do different things, but that's the fear that they worry about on these things. So. Um, we have to be careful about what we're, we can and we can't do when it comes to certain things um, if we're not following these. So we need to have the policy in place. We need to follow what it says, the smart stacks. You don't want to jeopardize your federal or your state funding, but mostly your federal funding on this. Those things could change down the road, but right now, that's... So if, some, if, if an organization is having a bake sale, do they have to provide, do they have to, like, they have to bring the box that the, the cupcakes were, you know? Well, this is during school. So yeah, during, so during the school day, it's different. So when they have, so let's take a bake sale that they do for the election. Yeah. That's different. That's separate. Like That's separate. That's not for kids to purchase. Right. right. Okay. So what, what if it's a bake sale, sale for the cheerleaders? In, it's in, in the, French Square. Right. Yeah. If it's after not a school hours. We don't it's do bake sales in the school. Just yeah. during school. Yeah. Brought That's all school. It's something like 20 minutes after the end of the school day or something like that is the yeah. rule. Right. Um, See, my, my issue with it so is, yeah, sorry. I mean, it's just, it's the government interfering with everyday life. You know, you've got bake sales. We all grew up with bake sales. We all grew up with, with uh, you know, celebrating different holidays in the classroom. And this really kind of handcuffs <coughs> us um, into it. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. But that's what the federal government requires for us to be funded for our school lunches. Yep. Is there any more discussion on the motion? Um, so. So this is the first reading. I don't think we have to actually even take a vote tonight. We'll, we'll look at it again on the 19th um, for the second reading, and we'll vote to adopt it at that point. Um, point of order, oh, okay. do we have to vote to waive the first reading? Yes. Yeah. yes. Can I make a motion to waive the first reading? Yes. Second by Mr. Vecchia. All in favor of waiving the first reading, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. <laughs> Abstentions? <laughs> Taking it. I mean, I wouldn't mind reading it. We put a lot of work into that. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. So we're back to public comment. Is there any public comment tonight? Mr. Fabiano? Just one. Um, as a parent, I just want to thank you for the job you guys did for the selection of the interim superintendent. I thought we had two great options right there. Um, the resumes of both of them were terrific. Um, one kind of can done in the system. She's had pretty much every position except superintendent. Um, and now we have a year to evaluate her, see what she can do. One thing we don't know about her is her leadership skills as a superintendent. And we have this year to look at it and see how she does. So I'm very happy with that decision. Um, so I hope we move forward. Thank you. Is there any other public comment tonight? Seeing no further public comment, um, we're down to public relations. Mr. Becca? 
just a great graduation, a great uh, awards night. Uh, good luck to the class of 2017. And played a great bunch of young people. I just want to echo what Mr. Becky has said. I really enjoyed myself. It was a wonderful event. Okay, for me. Okay. Same. Graduation was very exciting. The awards night was very exciting. Congratulations to all our graduates, and uh, you know, good luck in all their future endeavors. It was just really was great. Okay. And I might chime in. I hadn't been to a graduation since my daughter's graduated way back when, uh, and since I was on the school committee in a prior life. Uh, it was very enjoyable and very rewarding. Did a great job. It was nice to have it here in the high school. Awesome. Yes. Just a couple of items. Um, just a reminder that we do have some um, room naming ceremonies that oh, will yeah. be happening. Uh, and I believe on Wednesday there is the Toselli room naming. Um, so make sure you have that on your calendar. It's at Science Wing at uh, 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock, thank you. And then on June 12th, next Monday night at 5 o'clock, is the Norma and Paul Fasella um, naming. And that will be held up in the library. And then following that on the 17th, that Saturday morning, I know there's, we've got lots going on that day with the tall ships. But that is the um, Hurley, Dr. Hurley. Dr. Hurley naming. And then the following week will be the, on the 22nd, will be the Chris Ciotis naming in the gym. So all of those will be wrapped up before I'm done on the 23rd. But at least I wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of those. Also, this Sunday is the, I mean, uh, Sunday, June 18th, is the annual Father's Day family pancake breakfast. Uh, this Friday, uh, the Gorman Fort Banks PTO will have their annual ice cream social. And then last but not least, on Wednesday, June 28th, Alcohol Awareness Seminar from CASA. Um, and that will be um, from 6 to 8 p.m. at the CASA office, 18 Bartlett. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, sorry. Yep. The boys baseball team moved on to the quarterfinals. Now we just don't know what happened today, if they played at all. But we're really Game was excited. called off. What? It was oh, called. Right. It was rescheduled. It was rescheduled. So we'll find out if they make it to the semis oh, nice. uh, probably yeah, tomorrow. I thought you were saying today. Great. All right. So um, I think that there was executive session was um, placed on the agenda tonight. Um, the executive session is to um, consider or discuss a complaint or charge brought against a public officer, staff member, or individual. Um, that individual would be myself, and I would like to um, exercise my right to have that meeting held in public. Um, so. Well, I was the individual that originally asked for it to be on the agenda, and I had second thoughts about just having it on the agenda, and I changed my request to go into executive session. As I felt that at this particular point in time, given um, what happened and all of the associated outrage from the public, that we should not have to go through this whole thing again. But um, I have already said to you how I feel about the incident. And uh, I did it to you in writing and how I felt, and I, and I, I stand by it. And I, I still feel that you should consider stepping down as chair because I don't know how effective you can be for the next six months. So that's how I feel. Okay, thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, um, I understand that this, what we do here has a lot of stress and none of us are getting paid with doing what we all think is right. And I accept your apology on a personal level. I really do. <coughs> However, um, I do feel that in government, it's one thing to get attacked by constituents, but another thing to be personally attacked by a colleague. So I, I agree with Mr. Vecchia there. Okay, thank you. I have to give you credit, Don, <coughs> for reading those letters. I know it had to be painful to read uh, earlier tonight. I was a little bit offended by the post myself. My family saw it. My adult son saw it. I get the frustration that happens. We're all here as a group. We're all volunteers. We're all trying to do the right thing all the way across the board. I don't know how effective your, your chairmanship could be going forward. 
but I'll, I'll leave that to your conscience. Is there any other discussion? If, if I may, you know, I wasn't part of uh, the school committee at that point in time, but the ramifications of that uh, type of conduct, uh, conduct does uh, go beyond it. It did have some, uh, some implications on our previous town uh, council president. Uh, so I was sad to see that happen, uh, directly or indirectly. Uh, and I think we, we need to try to set the example and make sure that we set the example at any level, whether we're chairman, a council president, or any elected official. Uh, it sends a message not only to the general public, but to the kids who hear about it and their parents talk about it, and so on and so forth. Uh, so with that being said, uh, that's my comments. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I would just like to say that um, I continue to have full faith in you as a chair, and I think even your comments during all of our subcommittee meetings, both the negotiation committee meeting and the curriculum committee meeting have been productive and have helped us to move forward in our work, and I hope that this committee can come together um, and move forward with the important things that we have to do. So thank you. So I um, deeply regret um, my actions. I think that anyone who knows me or anyone who's followed me on social media would know that's very uncharacteristic of me. Um, I, um, I intend to continue as my role as chairperson and I believe that I have demonstrated that I can continue to be effective because I've been to four subcommittee meetings and this committee meeting tonight um, since that, that evening and I do feel like in each of those meetings, we've continued to move forward. Um, I understand that I've disappointed a lot of people and I've lost a lot of people's respect. Um, but I don't intend to resign from chairperson and I do believe that I have more work to do and I'll continue to fulfill my uh, last six months of my term. Well, on that note, let's move forward. Thank you. Let's agree so that we can disagree without being disagreeable and offensive. I agree. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Motion for the Okay, thank you. Motion to adjourn. To adjourn. <laughs> Motion second. to adjourn by Vice Chair Perrin. Is there a second? Second. Yeah. Second by Ms. Becky. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you.